A very good morning, hello and welcome to The Ladies Club. Thank you for joining us as we bring you another exciting episode of The Leading Woman's Talk Show in Mzanzi. My name is Phelan Kirti and it's wonderful to be in your company. Madimekala pena la amula na no larana le rata hang la mafuma hadi. Kilo na na lelea le kitika mafuma hadi aruna adipapadi muna la peng limo. Semwe mutle na libiso laka kile bo hang mutwedi. And it's great to be back with you as we continue to celebrate all female champions in the challenging world of sport. Now today we're going to be chatting about a woman who dared to break the mold in sport. When someone breaks the mold, we recognize that they have done something differently than it's ever been done before. Well, take a look at some of the pioneers who forged ahead when it comes to unpopular sports or rather perceived to be unpopular sports for females to participate in those that are male dominated. Their remarkable achievements have captured everybody's heart and attention and have given courage to so many of us. And that's who we celebrate on our show. Remember, you are welcome to join in on the conversation. It's very easy. Go through to our social media platforms at Sport at SABC, at Valen Kirtley at Lebo Mutswidi, and use the hashtag, The Ladies Club. Also, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. Magahara Weka, the game changer that we have in studio. She's an awesome guest. And today, she's South African cricketer, Dumisu Kukune, who is here where she's going to be getting us into her world of sports super fan but before we do that before we do that let's set the tone as we always do with yes. an inspiring quote and I like this one's this week's one it's from US senator and a candidate for president Kamala Harris she says if we do not lift up women and families everyone will fall short. Kamala is an American lawyer and policy influencer who is blazing the trail in the world of politics. Early this year, she officially announced her campaign to run for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States in 2020 election. And back in 2017, she also was sworn in as a U.S. Senator for California, becoming the second African-American woman and first South Asian-American Senator in the history. Yes, she spent her life fighting injustice, a passion that was first inspired by her mother, who is an Indian-American immigrant, immigrant, activist and breast cancer researcher. I love what she's actually said there mm. because this is a sentiment that we've heard from so many of the wives and women who have rose to prominence throughout the world, that we need to uplift women in order to uplift not only families but also entire communities and societies. Ah, the nation at large. But we're about to take a quick break. Before we do that, let's take a quick look at what's making news, looking at a crisis that's looming as that's looming now as Congo announced that they can no longer host next year's African Women's Championship and this is due to financial challenges. This move obviously has opened up the big debate of whether South Africa might step in and take over. Yeah, there are, however, reports that uh, South Africa is highly unlikely to come on board as a late replacement to host the tournament. Congo cited ca cash flow problems in their letter to CAF after they agreed to host the eight-team tournament, which CAF are now considering expanding to accommodate even more teams. Really, really sad news. So I do wonder that uh, decision is obviously pending. But as we go to a quick break, I'd like to welcome all the ladies and women once again because we are celebrating women. Women's Month officially being the uh, the new month of August. And we're going to talk all things ladies, women in sport and continue to celebrate each other. Remember, you can get involved on social media. It's at sports at SABC, at Levin Mutswedi, at Valen Kirtley. And just use our hashtag across all social media platforms. Hashtag the Ladies Club. Our game changer is coming up after this. Welcome back on Sobu Hila Nana Olaruna Le Ratahang Lama Fumahadi Eling the Ladies Club. Hunajwali, we are joined in studio by South Africa's cricket rising star, Dumisu Kukuna. And she is our game changer, Hon Bieno. She's always defied the odds and pushed boundaries in her life. 
Yeah, she made her debut for Easterns at the age of 14, despite not having been selected from school's cricket. It was her boldness that opened doors for her back then, and it's that same spirit that's pushing her to even greater heights today. Demi's rise to playing for the senior Proteus women's team has been nothing short of astonishing, having joined the SA Cricket Academy, Gasly Mosa 2017, but I don't even want to give too much of what she's achieved because she has to tell the story, Vela. Yes, she certainly does. Welcome Welcome to the Ladies Club Lounge, Tumi. So good to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> the love for cricket, starting way back then, Haununa Little Muta Super. What was that all about? I loved uh, playing cricket, especially I loved playing cricket with the boys when I was very young. And my brothers would encourage me to also play like they play because they were doing well at that time. And yeah, I just, I just loved it. And I, that's when the passion for cricket started. I believe that you actually started to learn to play cricket on the tennis court, which is another sport that you loved and some actually call it your first love. Yes, um, I started playing um, tennis because I thought like a girl, uh, cricket didn't have girls cricket and uh, at uh, Davidson we didn't have like enough facilities to play cricket and uh, so we ha the only thing we had was the tennis court so yeah I had to use what we had to build my career. <laughs> but tell me before building a career because that couldn't have been it at that su such a young age, the cousin that you saw play uh, with a different kind of uh, a hand or a different hand that you thought okay maybe this is something I'd like to just try out um, how would how were they a big influence in your chosen field of sport they played a huge role in my life and especially Kabelo Sukukina because mm. she, he was the one that actually I wanted to be like him Who's because was, Kabelo Sukukina is um, my cousin mm -hmm. uh, he played for SA under 19 as well mm -hmm. and yeah he He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> when you as a family heard that he had made the under-19 national team, did that stir something inside of you? Yes, uh, I was very excited for him and that actually made me realise that uh, maybe we uh, be from a family of sports and maybe if I do follow my dream and if I do work hard then I'll also be like him. Why cricket though? Because you were involved in all of the sports. You were the first person that everybody wanted on their team because you were just so good at anything that involved a ball. So why was it cricket that you actually thought, you know what, I love this game? At the age of 14, my mom said to me, um, maybe you could try go and uh, uh, look for a women's team because uh, I didn't know that they had a women's team and then there's this other uh, coach called Gif Klaka said no like just bring him just bring her sorry to to the trials and then we'll see what we can do with her and then when I started um, holding like the like the red ball yeah. the first time I was just like this is it I'm you go for I, I'm it. going for it so yeah. when did it change then uh, so you held the red ball for the first time Okay, there's no stopping after this. What exactly were the, the, the next steps that you had to take to make it your dream that, you know what, pro tiers, green and gold, this is actually a possibility? It was very difficult for uh, girls to, to get into the uh, SA uh, national team because there's a huge gap between a provincial and national team, whereas there's nothing... Uh, where you can maybe, uh, uh, for example, facilities at our provincial uh, unions where we can use them for maybe if I wanted to go to the gym, then I, I'll have to go run at the stadium or something. I didn't, we didn't have proper facilities. So I just thought, I just told myself that, you know what, if I really, do, uh, if I really want to uh, play for the protest, then I have to work hard. I have to use what I had to, to, to build a <laughs> career for myself. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell us how that happened because it happened really quickly. You were drafted into the National Academy and mm. then in 2018 you were selected for that outbound to, to the West Indies and now you have cemented your place in that team after West Indies, inbound tours of Sri Lanka, Pakistan and you've just been notching up those matches. Yes, uh, I've always been a hard worker. I've always wanted to, to shine uh, in, in every sport, I've always wanted to be that person whereby if we're doing something, then I know I'm fully in. I'm um, committed to, to doing the, the, the hard work that's been done. And then that's actually when I realized that I mean, I'm, I'm going to be in it for, <laughs> for, for it. I'm going to stay. Yeah. You just needed that little <laughs> gap yeah. and you were going to take it. Yes. Tell me how it felt knowing that for the first time 
you hear in the news for the first time that you've been drafted into the ladies pro tier side i was very i was very emotional because i want to know where exactly <laughs> you were as the news came i was at home and i was with my brother kavelosi cooking oh. the one that actually uh got me into the sports and i was very ex I, like i was very emotional i remember the the that's that that was like actually the the first thing that came uh, to my mind was i'm i'm going to stay i'm going to stay i i'm i don't want to go in and out mm. i don't want to go in and out if this is uh what uh god made me to do then i i'll i'll use that and i was very emotional and very nervous at the first uh, at the first time because yeah why were you emotional and nervous uh, the hardest thing that uh, that um I had to go through was my father didn't um didn't um wasn't here to see the hard work the 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 passion I had mm. for cricket because when when he passed on I was, I stopped playing cricket and so I wanted to show him that you this, made it. yeah and I'm, I can make a career out of it so that was I was very emotional and what me. made you restart the cricket after he had passed on uh i i just realized that if you really love something then you have to go for it sometimes we don't um we don't follow our dreams because of what other people say or uh, or maybe what we come across maybe we don't have facilities but then i said to myself um uh, i i want to go back and and play What motivates you now to continue playing and to continue giving your all? Uh it has to be playing uh alongside my role models, Shabnam Ishmael. She's always mm -hmm. been my role model and also again my family as well. They've been like a support system for me uh since the day I started cricket. Uh when I said I'm going to stop playing cricket, my mom supported me. When I said I wanted to play uh volleyball, tennis, she supported me. So I think that's that's the best thing that has ever happened. to me when I started playing cricket. <laughs> What did your mom say when you made the team? Ah, oh, she was very excited. She was also emotional. She cried <laughs> with me. <laughs> I remember and she she said to me, "I did I told you that you were going to make uh, the the SA uh, pro tiers and then yeah, cuz I only gave myself like 2 years before last year i told myself that so i'm going to two be... years before last year you were how old because now you <laughs> people are just like but how old is she cuz you're still very young all of this happened when you were pretty young so two years before last year and you still stopped and you know it's it's a lot that you've experienced in such a short period of time and you were still in your teens yes i was 19 i was 19 yeah. and um i wanted to play when i was 22 i wanted to play when i was 22 because as i said like it was really hard for uh, girls to get in the the squad but i always knew that i have the talent and i have the passion for cricket and i'm very hard working but then i just i just I, i don't know maybe i didn't believe in myself that much uh but yeah when i got selected last year i was i was just like yeah that's it <laughs> an advice that you've received from your brother after getting the news first Raylan's asked about what your mom said what did the big boy the big man say Cavelo that you looked up to in the sport there's this um we used to say uh when they give you an opportunity you must grab it with both hands mm. and that's what he said to me he said if you get the opportunity if they give you the ball the first uh, ball then you need to grab it with both hands and uh show that you you want to be there and you want to do this. Well, you got some some of your best T20 figures in that tour of the West Indies, 2 for 27. You've played 14 T20 internationals for the Proteas, uh taking 11 wickets. And on the ODI front, you played 9 matches for South Africa, taking a total of a 10 wickets. And I know you're getting ready for a Bangladesh now. So we'll chat a little bit more about all the things that are still to come and your expectations because it looks like a long and fruitful career <laughs> ahead. But we have to take a break. So do stay with us and remember you can get involved on social media. It I is. Yes, absolutely. Uh, hashtag the Ladies Club at Valen Kirtley at Lebo Motswedi at Sport at SABC. Continue all the exciting conversations with our leading ladies in sport.
back. You're watching The Ladies Club. Thank you so much for staying with us. It's time now to focus in on our trailblazer. Absolutely. And today's trailblazer is SA cricketer Shabnim Ismail, who is currently one of the fastest bowlers in women's cricket and has come a very long way since the international debut. Back at Slimsa 2007. Yes, she's represented South Africa at the 2009 and 2013 World Cups and is currently Mzanzi's all-time leading wicket-taker in both the One Day International as well as the T20 International format. She's also ranked as the second lady when it mm -hmm. comes to world player rankings on really the ICC T20 International players. Mm -hmm. So, Born. incredible. In the Mother City, I mean, that talent comes all the way from the Mother City, uh, very own South African, playing cricket in school. And it wasn't long until she made her international debut for the Proteus Woman, Kasimosa 2007. Also, she was, the, she was 18. So it just also shows you the many South African ladies who've had the opportunity to represent their country wearing green and gold at such a young age, like yourself, Dumi. Especially when you start uh, playing uh, cricket at a very young age, I think you have... Um a lot of maybe opportunities because your body's also, you know, like uh, when you're uh, a woman, your body gets, um, I don't know, not muscular so fast. It, you, you're not... You get womanly. Yeah, you know, you get womanly and you uh, uh, grow breasts. And womanly? Womanly, you know. <laughs> you get so, womanly. <laughs> yeah, so starting at a very young age, I think it has advantages of you can st uh, stop uh, maybe preventing um, those things uh, to to take over your your sporting career so yeah uh, you got opportunities when you were young but you did mention Shabnim as being one of your role models mm. what was that like going into the team and getting advice firsthand from her um we start I started playing with Ishmael at provincial level and she saw me when I was playing uh, against uh, Gauteng, the Lions, and she was playing for the Lions as well. And she spoke to me, she gave me motivational words, and she told me that she wants to see me in the Proteus setup. And then when I got to the Proteus setup, she was very excited. She was wow. like, you're going to be right by Full my circle. side, you know? Wow. Yeah, and that was the best thing that has happened to me because now I had mentors, I had people to talk to when I was struggling because she's also a, a fast bowler, and I've always wanted to, to be a fast bowler because... A lot of people told me that you, I can't be a fast bowler because I'm short and I don't have, uh, uh, I'm not muscular or whatsoever. So I, I always looked up to her and said, no, but she can bowl quick and I can also do that as well. All right, and just looking at some of the visuals here on, on our screen in studio, how important is it to go back home? Uh, how important is it to go back home and show the youngsters in our communities that it's possible? For me, I think I hold um, family, uh, I don't know, maybe chores or family duties very important because they, they're the ones that uh, make you, they build you, they make you the person you want to become mm -hmm. or, you know. So I think it's very important to all the time when we maybe get time, go back to our families, go back home, uh, spend time with family. And this is at Granny's house. <laughs> what does she make you do that, <laughs> me, that brings you back down to earth? You know, when you're in sports, you, you're always away, you're always uh, traveling. So yeah. when I come back home, she'll tell me, ah, that's what you got, Lolo. please wash the dishes. Yeah. Or maybe, can you please mop the floor? Or does she tell you to go on your knees? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, uh, these in this day and age, uh, we don't, we no longer oh. want to go down on our knees and clean. So I use the mop, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's very fast to use. So yeah. <laughs> You've got a very busy life because you're also studying mm -hmm. BCom in financial management at Poch University. So how do you manage to fit all of this in? Uh, it's, it's very hectic. It's very tough because uh, when, you, when you're in sports and when you're traveling and when tours, you get tired, your body gets tired. Mm -hmm. um, you come back and you, don't, you just want to have a shower and go back and just uh, go to sleep. And, when you come back, you just have to study. You have to think that, hey, it's, it's a must that I have to study. I have to do this. And because also, again, a, a, a cricket career is very short. You can get injured or maybe you can um, uh, get dropped maybe at the age yeah. of 
at, the, at a very young age, maybe if you're not performing so well. So I feel like uh, with school is very important and I can also juggle the two when I'm done with practice or I can ask my coaches that, no, this, uh, can I go uh, and study because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a bit tired and I need to study, focus and uh, yeah, so school is very important. What are your goals when it comes to cricket? to cricket mm -hmm. and your time with the women proteas? My goal is to become consistent um, because when you get when you get into se to the setup there are a lot of things that happen that happens um, for instance as I said I'm studying and I need to focus on studying and also again I need to look after my performance then if I'm not performing then I can get dropped or or because uh, these days cricket they, they they pay us so it's like a career now and so it's 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 very important that I should uh, maybe that's that's one of the goals that I that I wanted to, that I uh, set up for myself to 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 know that there's a life and a career after cricket. So yeah. And in your downtime, when you're done with the books, when you're done with the practicing on the pitch. Uh, because you are still young, what do you do? Uh, I love reading. What are you currently reading? I'm reading Unfinished Business. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to, I wanted to get into business, but then um, I just, I don't know, I just figured that there's not a lot of jobs, and so I started reading business books, um, philosophy as well, and motivational books. What is your message to young girls that have a dream of perhaps following a career in sport or uh, following their dream when it comes to something they may want to study? The message I tell them is they should always be focused, mm. um, uh, fall in love with the process, fall in love with, I mean, you can't do, uh, you can't do anything that's going to pay your bills or uh, that's going to build your career if you don't love it. So you must fall in love with what you do, fall in love with... Um, we, we all get uh, challenges and mm. uh, obstacles, but uh, you must just fall in love with the process. So in closing, I want to find out your next big thing in the next three years. Where do you see it me? I want to see myself in the rankings of top ten worldwide. <laughs> yes, that's more yes. like it, that's more like it. <laughs> Yes. Which format do you enjoy more, T20 or ODIs? Mm. I enjoy both actually, but I love um, T20s more because uh, we play with the, with the creation, it's very fast mm. and you need to be always awake. Uh, ODIs are a very long format and most or maybe a lot of girls in the sports get tired or sleep or they're not buzzing <laughs> in the field. Sleep, so, doing an ODI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but you know, just get tired. Uh, and I mean, sometimes you play away uh, in the West Indies, it's very humid, very hot, and you get tired easily. So, but I love the T20s, it's very, very nice. All right, Dumi, thank you so much. You've been an inspiration. I hope the young girls uh, and boys that are perhaps watching uh, it really have been inspired by your journey. And I'm looking forward to that top 10 position in less than three years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dumi, thank you so much for being our game changer today. Thank you. Remember, you can get involved and continue the conversation on social media. It's so easy. Hashtag the Ladies Club at Sports at SABC, at Livermore Sweaty, at Braden Curtly. And that is all we have time for for this week. And until we meet again, remember that greatness is never given, it's always earned. Goodbye. Bye bye.